Wow. Wow. So stay standing up if you would. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I feel you. Oh, thank you for the precious blood. Oh, God, I just pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, that Lord, you just keep working. Keep healing. Keep delivering. Keep saving. Keep setting free. Lord, I just praise you in this house today, God, because there's no other Savior, no other God. There's one Savior, one Lord, one God. His name is Jesus. And Lord, no other name under heaven is like that name. And Lord, I confess you as God today. I confess you as Lord today. Lord, I pray as I preach. I pray as I minister about you. <clears throat> that God, you would just give me voice. Give me with my voice. May I have clarity today. Lord, may your word go forward and not return void. I praise you that you have given us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So Lord, I pray that you release your spirit. It would run these aisles, dear God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, dear God, there's no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I pray, dear God, the best way I know how today, Lord. I Less of me and more of you. Lord, be with my friends, dear God. Be with this congregation. Be with our youth. Be with our church, dear God, in everything that we do. I love you, and I give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Glory to the Amen. Amen. I want you to, while the spirit of worship is in the house, I want you to go ahead and thank the Lord for allowing you to be here today and waking you up and putting clothes on your back and uh, food on your table and a smile on your face. And uh, it's, it's good. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it's preaching time. It's preaching time. Last week... I opened, a, started a series called Soul Detox. I've had a lot of uh, people email me, a lot of people call, and uh, a lot of people were getting this. And um, we talked about toxic thoughts last week. How many of y'all remember that? Praise the Lord. Um, we talked about toxic thoughts. How do you identify those, those toxic thoughts? And we talked about negative thoughts. And we talked about fearful thoughts and discontent thoughts. And we talked about critical thoughts, which was one of my ones that I had to deal with as a pastor. And guess what? I still deal with it. Amen. I still deal with it. There's fear will try to rise up in me and being critical will rise up in me and fear will rise up in me and negative thoughts will rise up in me. So here's what I want to show you today. I asked you a question last week. How do you detox your soul? How do you detox your soul? I didn't answer that last week because I want you to be here this week. And I wanted to talk to you, so today I'm going to answer that question for you. How do you detox your soul? Remember, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. Your mind, your will, your emotions. Everybody say, my mind, my will, and my emotions. Sounds like all of us. See, you are a soul. You're, you're, you're not a body that has a soul. You're a soul that has a body. Don't ever forget what I'm preaching and teaching to you because it'll help you later in life. There's a, there's a spiritual battle, and this is, a, this is something that's going to resonate with all of us. There's a spiritual battle going on today with our spirit and our flesh. Whether you like it or not, and you're super spiritual in this house today, I, I guarantee you, you still deal with the flesh. You still have those moments where your flesh will rise up. Come on. You will. There'll be times that you'll get mad. There'll be times you'll be critical. There'll be times you'll have negative, bad, stinking thoughts. So where does it start? It starts in your mind. So today I'm going to teach you how do you detox your soul. But before I even get into that, i got to tell you what I did. And this is a personal thing that I did to ever get to these three points I'm going to give you today. As an individual, as a friend, and as a pastor, as a man, because watch this, I talked a little bit about last week, I deal with my mind all the time. I deal with my eyes all the time. Amen. And I know you come to a church and you want people to be politically correct and have the right vocabulary and the right dictionaries and the right Bibles that they're preaching out of. But listen to me. I'm going to be brutally honest about my life. That's all I know is about me right now. I deal with me every day like you deal with you every day. So this sermon is going to be tough, but it's going to be on. It's going to be tight and it's going to be right. 
but it's going to be on. I made my mind up, and you're going to have to make your mind up right now. Right now, before you even go into the sermon, that no matter what, you're going to obey the Spirit of God. No matter what, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're, what's going on, you're going to have to make your mind up right now. I'm going to obey the Spirit of God. I'm going to follow His Word. Even if it don't feel good, even if I don't like it, I'm going to follow His Word. I'm going to obey His voice. I'm going to obey His Spirit. I'm going to follow His Word and His command, and I'm going to pursue righteousness. In other words, I'm going to pursue a life that's going to honor my Father who art in heaven. Amen. And I'm telling you, when I made my mind up, and Brandon, when I started following those rules, and I said, God, it's all about you, and Lord, my mind is horrible. See, how many of you know God knows exactly what you're thinking right now? Isn't that scary? He knows exactly what's going through your mind right now. You're not fooling nobody. You're not conning nobody. You're not fronting nobody because God's got your digits, baby. And He wants to help you this morning. So here's what we're going to do. If you have your Bibles, I'm, 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 I'm going to teach you three steps. I talked about one last week, so really it's going to be two today. But last week I told you how these three steps, detoxing your soul, you have to identify it. You have to identify your toxic thoughts. Listen to me, I'm going to, I'm going to teach, I'm going to preach, I'm going to lay man at your feet today, but it's going to be a good word. So here's what I want you to do before we get started. Everybody do this. Come on, we're not going to do calisthenics or nothing, but I want everybody to do this. If you're listening by radio, just touch your head real quick, but keep one hand on the wheel. I want you to say this word. Say, God, touch my mind today. I surrender to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason why I do that is because the Bible says whatever you touch and agree. There's power in touching and agreeing. So I have to touch my mind. But I made my mind up that I'm going to follow God's Word. But you have to identify the toxic thoughts. You have to identify those negative, and this is going to be tough. You have to identify those negative, fearful, dis, uh, I'm talking about those discontent and those critical thoughts. You know when you're gossiping. You know when you're talking about somebody. And here's what we do as Christians. We say, Lord, well, bless, their, bless them, and then we talk about them. Watch this. If I, I say this all the time. I want to keep this word in front of you because I have to deal with it daily as a pastor. I know things I really don't want to know. So I have to touch my mind every day and say, God, how do you love them? How do you want me to pray for them? And God will do that. But you have to identify those toxic thoughts. The Bible says if you identify your sin and your weakness and your bad thoughts and confess them, what did God say? Hey, what He said, I will I'll forgive you. But first time, we've got to identify them. Watch this. If you, I'm just going to be honest. If you've, got, if you've got a gossiping problem, you need to identify that problem. Say, God, here, I, I've got a problem. If you like to drink alcohol, and I know this is tough, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. If you've got a drinking problem, there's a song, I've got a drinking problem. You've got to identify that and say, God, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what's going on in my mind. And this is why I'm fearful and discontent. And I'm worried all the time. Because here's the bottom line. You're, you think alcohol will settle you down, and it will for about five minutes. But when you wake up, you still got a problem. I just say take, a, take another drink of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. I say let God touch your mind this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And Christians have that problem. They don't like to identify nothing. It's everybody else's problem. Yeah. That boy's preaching now. It's everybody. Well, if, if they would get it right, I would get it right. And they're doing wrong, so if they're doing wrong, I can do wrong. And they're saved, and they're getting away with it, so I'm saved, and I can get away with it. That's not what God said. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. Yes is yes. No is no. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. You've got to identify what's going on in your life. And right now, I'm going to challenge you. Write down an area in your life that, that you can identify, whether it's a critical thought, a negative thought. I'm telling you, if you identify these thoughts, then God can work with it. But most people are running from it. Most people run from it. 
the thing that God gave me, I want you to turn to your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And this is my, after you identify the toxic thought, you, how many of y'all identified it? Come on, got 10 people, we're hurting. How many of you, right down right now, identify, because I'm going to help you, I'll get you through this process, but if you just, right now, if you're rebellion, the Bible says that rebellion is the spirit of witchcraft. Some of you may have a rebellion spirit in you. So I'm going to do what I want to do. That will not work when it comes to following Jesus. God will pick you up and plant you in Russell Springs. Four years! Hallelujah. But the second thing God told me, after you identify it, you write it down, you identify it. Come on, I want young people to get in this, sir. Here's what I noticed today. I said, I looked over and I seen empty chairs. We are so blessed. I am so blessed to look over every Sunday. And every chair is filled up with the youth and they're raising their hands and they're praising God. And that's y'all's babies. And we ought to thank God just briefly that that section is filled up with young people that's made their minds up. I'm going to praise the Lord. Somebody give God praise in this house. Young people. And people say, well, that's their future. No, they're on now. I am not going to wait till they're 40 or 50 or 60 years old and got a cane packing it around to teach Sunday school. We've got, we've got Marcus right now teaching the college class. We've got young people. We've got Eddie and Michelle. And you say, well, they just joined the church. Yes, they did. And yes, they're ready to work. And yes, they rolled their sleeves up. And yes, they're teaching your babies. Here's what I love. All the critical people never do nothing. All they do is sit back in a little blue chair and complain. I know I'm preaching now. All they do is say, well, I can't believe they put them in leadership. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they preached 45 minutes and played for 45 minutes. That's an hour and a half. <laughs> I get dizzy. Critical. Critical people never do nothing for the kingdom. They never do nothing for the kingdom. All they do is sit and exercise their lips. We may not have nobody next Sunday. But it may be ten. But you know what I'll do with those ten? I'll take those ten who are filled with the Holy Ghost and we'll run into this town and we'll change Camelsville from the inside out and we'll rock and roll for the King Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at this 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3 is where we're going to start reading. It says, For though we live in the world... How many know we're here? <laughs> we live in the world. Look what he says right here. We do not wage war as the world does. Listen, this is going to help you right now. Let God minister to you right now. We don't wage wars as the, as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Oh! On the contrary, they have a divine, listen to this, they have divine power. Listen, the weapons that I fight with is called the B-I-B-L-E. His name is Jesus Christ. He's still the King. He's still Lord. He's still Alpha. He's still Omega. He's still God. Hallelujah. That's my weapons of today. I don't fight y'all. Good gracious. Watch this. We're going to preach here in a minute. It says these words. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is anything that's got a stronghold on you right now. Anything that's got a stronghold on you right now is a stronghold. Look here in verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. God, let me preach on this just for a moment. It starts in your mind. You believe that lie. It goes not against you, but it goes against the truth. It goes against the knowledge of God, Jamie. It's not, watch this. Think about this. Satan is after you because he's really after God. If Satan, wants, ah, if Satan can stop you and stop the activity of God working in your life, he has stopped some activity of God in your life here on earth. And on earth is where we're at. But this earth is not our victim. This earth is not our, our people that we fight against. God says, I put something in you, Sheila Moore, that nobody can stop. Y'all believe this? See, I, I'm crazy enough, I believe this. 
that when I lay hands upon the sick, they shall arise. When I pray in the name of the Father, mm, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they shall get up, rise up, stand up, and the devil will shut up. Somebody help me preach this morning. That's the power that we've got in the name of Jesus. If you're a guest here today, I'm not apologizing. I'm not backing off no more. We're going to preach the Bible, and, we're going to, and it's just going to get uncomfortable. You're going to be sitting there squirming like this. You're going to be trying to take 15 bathroom breaks. I hope the door locks. Because I don't want you to listen. That's the problem with the church, Johnny. They've been running and running and running. You start feeling the Spirit of God on you. Instead of going, oh, what's going on? It's called God. It's called the Holy Spirit. He loves you. He wants you. He wants a relationship with you. He desires not just to walk with you and talk with you. He desires to be in you all day Long. All day long. He says these in verse 5. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Listen to this. And we take captive. Let this minister to you. Captive. Every what? Huh. Every thought. And make it obedient. We whip it. We, we whip it with the Bible verse. We put some Jesus on the scene. And the devil's been messing with somebody in here for way too long. And I just think it's time that the church stands up and says, that ain't what God said. That's not in his Bible. That's not his word. And it's time to go to the enemy's camp and take it back because the devil don't own it anyway. It belongs to me and God's people. And you should praise God for that. Watch this. When God made man, he made him to last forever. Some of you are speaking death warrants over your life. Some of you are sitting there going, well, that's just what God wants. No, what God wants, He created mankind to live forever. Second thing, you have to reject it. You have to reject that toxic thought. You got identified it. I say, I identified it. Now I'm going to reject it. So listen, you got to reject it. In other words, you have to arrest it. You have to arrest that toxic thought. If you have any thought that isn't of God, you got to grab it and you got to arrest it. Y'all got me? Grab it and arrest it. Grab it and arrest it. You got to acknowledge it. You got to arrest it. You got to re- you got to reject it. See, listen to me. It's going to blow y'all away. I am not a prisoner of a negative, fearful, critical discontent spirit listen to me that the Bible says that we got to arrest it you got to reject it and you make it prisoner you make it prisoner you may look at me I know this is like he's up and going well you just don't know my thought life you just don't know my thought life you just don't know what I'm up against listen you're blessed Maybe the reason why you feel like you feel is because you're, you're praising the wrong spirit. You're talking about the wrong thing. You've not arrested that bad thought in your mind. You've not rejected it. Here's what some of you are doing. Well, I'll just never make it. Poor little me. That ain't what God said about you. That's not, you, the Bible says you grab that thought, you arrest that thought, and then, listen to me, it, it's your prisoner. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the word power. Y'all see that word power in verse 4 right there, 2 Corinthians chapter 10? The word power. The word power in the Greek is called dunamis. Dynamite. Yeah, that's a Greek word for power. You can mark that power out of your Bible and put dunamis there, and right beside it, dunamis equals dynamite. Listen to this. Let me go on a little bit. Let me go a little bit deeper because I want to teach you just a little bit too. Y'all got the word stronghold. It says you've got the power. Look what it says here in verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine what? Power. Divine dynamite. This, I, this is what God said. I didn't say it, Bobby. I didn't write the Bible. To demolish strongholds. The word strongholds in the Greek is aquamora. Aquamora. Everybody say aquamora. Not, not moron. Aquamora. And aquamora means 
that a, we, it's a prisoner locked up by deception, locked up by a lie, locked up by what the devil's been telling. This is a good word, Glenn Wisdom. So what God is really saying, listen to me, we have the power, the dunamis exiazo, the dynamite in our life to speak life over the prisoner who has been locked up for a year after year after year, and we can help set them free. Somebody give God praise in this house. You have the power, the dynamite in your life. Think about that. I tell people all the time, I mean, you bless me. Well, I, it, I, I don't know. That ain't dynamite. You ain't even got a wick. Man, I'm telling you, the devil is eating some of you for supper. Yes, they are. He's in your mind. And now you're sitting, I know, how many of y'all getting this word today? I feel in my spirit that right now God's ministering to people that said, will set you free today. Listen, identify that thing in your life. If it's negative, if it's criticism, whatever it may be, identify it. Identify it. And look, I'm going to show you something else in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 3. This is a word that the Lord gave me. It blessed me. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 3. Look at this. If you're not there, I'm going to go. Listen. It's on the big Bible. Yet you know me, O Lord. This is the prophet Jeremiah who preached for 120 years and never led a soul to Jesus Christ. This is the prophet in Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. He said, oh, I love the Lord. He's all I got. And all this. And then the next thing you know through verses 11 through 20, he said, Lord, kill me. Just take me home. Lord, it ain't worth it. I've been preaching for 120 years and nothing's ever happened. He had a good moment. He had a bad moment. Who's that sound like? Us is <laughs> sounds like us. Sounds like me and you. One day we're hot. One day we're cold. One day we're in. One day we're out. One day we love the Lord. Next day we're like, Lord, take me home. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. What's what he says? Yet, yeah, Lord, you know me, O Lord. You see me. That's what it says. And test my... Yeah. And test my thoughts about you. Watch what he says. I love Jeremiah. He brings it out the best I've ever heard it. He says, drag them off like sheep to be butchered. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Set them apart for the day of slaughter. My God, I feel this. When you reject it and you, you realize it, you identify it, you reject it, and then you say, God, this is not of you. Take it off. Get it away from me. Kill it. Slaughter it like you slaughtered a lamb in the old days. God, I don't want it no more. Lord, kill that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, kill that thought. In, everybody say, come on. Kill that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. Slaughter that thought. Reject it. And when you start living like that, there's going to be something transpire in your life. That's exactly what we do today. We need Christians to say, God, kill that thought. Slaughter that thought. Slaughter it, dear God. Drag it away from me. Hallelujah. Drag it away from me. I don't want to think like that no more. Lord, you know me. You know my mind. You know my thoughts. You know me from the inside out. But God, this thought is not of you. So Lord, slaughter it. Slaughter that. So how do we replace it? Because I know y'all pretty well. And I said, Lord, I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, well, I do that. I do that. I, sometimes I say, Lord, please help me. See, you're praying wrong. And it's almost like you've got to deprogram the church the way the church has been preached to for centuries that they've had a preacher get up in front of them and they may have preached the best way that they know how. But I'm telling you, it's straight from the Word of God. You identify it. Y'all ready? The second part is you reject it. You arrest it. You kill it. You slaughter it, Glenn. You don't let it have you no more. It's a, it's a help on it. And the third thing is this. You replace it. Everybody say, I'm going to replace it now. Yeah, look at this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And the peace of who? God, which transcends all understanding. Listen to me. Quit making excuses that you think you can't live for the Lord. God says, my wisdom. Listen, this is powerful stuff. My wisdom, my knowledge transcends all understanding. God says, I've made you in my image. I made you to last. 
I made the church to win and not to fail. I get so tired of the gates of hell charging the church. And I think the church has enough power to charge the gates of hell. I think we got enough power in this house today to say, Lord, I've had enough. I'm going to slaughter that slaughter and kill it. And Lord, replace it. So what do you replace it? Look, it transcends all understanding. Will. Watch this. Guard your hearts and your... Listen, if you're going home watching pornography, if you're going home and doing those horrible things, your mind will be filled with that. The next thing you know, you'll be having a lustful affair with the next girl or next man that walks by you. Oops. You got to guard your eye gate. Oh, that's a word from the Lord. You got to guard your eye gate. Because if you open the gates, whatever you're looking at, if the gates are open, it will come in. I just declare today that the floodgates of heaven need to be opened up and God needs to rain down, hallelujah, on His church like He's never rained down on it before. Whatever goes through your eye gate will go to your heart gate. My God, Lord's feeding me. I love it when I feel the Lord, hallelujah. I love it when I feel Jesus speaking unto me because it's a word for me and it's a word for you, hallelujah. Watch your eye gate. Watch what you watch at home. If you want to take your little girl down beside you, what? turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it in the name of Jesus. If you have to have the remote control when your wife goes out of the room and she comes back in, you flip, 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 flip. You shouldn't be watching it. Now watch, I'm preaching to me too. You said, Brian, um, have you ever watched anything bad? Yeah. How, how does, that, does, that, does that help y'all? Because see, what y'all do, <laughs> what Christians do, they say, well, Brother Brian did it, he's okay. Watch this. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I've got to protect my eye gate. I've got to protect my mind. I've got to protect my heart. Whatever goes in will come out. Mama was right. Whoever you hang around, oh, I'm going to change them. How's that been working out for you? <laughs> Do we really think we got that much stinking power that we're going to change? No, it's the God changes them working through you. But if you put yourself in a bad situation, the, the skin will never win. It'll never win. So I replace it. What I replace it with? Watch this. See, guard your, guard your hearts, guard your minds with Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Y'all ready for this? This is good. Finally, I love Paul. Paul said these words, finally, Glenn. I'm so tired of preaching this. Finally, finally, the church has it. The church of Philippi, they had a problem. They wasn't believing everything God said in the Bible. And Paul was preaching and preaching and preaching. And Paul finally got into them, Glenn. He said, finally, brothers, sisters, young people, Whatever is what? True. Whatever is noble. Whatever is right. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Hallelujah. Think about those things. Think about those things. Anything praiseworthy. Anything of an excellent spirit. Not just a get me by spirit. That's the problem with the churches today. They do enough just to get by. Oops. Well, everything looks good. It needs to look great. This is God's house. And now this God's house, I'm going to be honest with you, God's house should look far better than that house up there in the back of the woods. This is God's house. And for God's house and for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, how do you do? What do you replace it with? There it is. The truth. The truth, Jamie. Then when people say, well, I'm lonely. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what God said. When, 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 when things don't look right, when I start thinking negative thoughts, I'm a nobody. I wrote this down. That's a lie. Because the Bible says I'm a new creation. So when I start thinking fearful thoughts, that's a lie. <laughs> because the Bible says He'll never leave us. 
So when you start thinking, having discontent thoughts, how, I, that's a lie. Because the Bible says I, I, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He anoints my head with oil. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me. Oh, that follow me all the days of my life. You're not left behind. You're not out. You're not a loser. You're good in this house today. You've got to have those kind of thoughts to get through in this world. Some of you are sick because you thought yourself sick. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to preach it until you get it or something else happens. Some of you are, are depressed. Because you're thinking yourself depressed. Amen. Oh, that's good. Some of you, gosh, some of you need to take your computer and open your back door and throw it out. You know why? Because you can't handle it. There's a little pop-up ad that will come up and she's half naked. You say, Brian, you shouldn't preach like this. If I don't preach the truth, you'll fall by a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you have a lustful heart. Just maybe because you're looking at the wrong thing. I told y'all it's going to be tough. Can y'all handle it? Because yeah. it's Because it's the truth. Some of you are thinking yourself sick. Some of you are mad and upset because you feel that you've been rejected and God saved your soul. He stood you up. He filled you with His Spirit. And you should be walking, talking. You should be a walking, talking Bible. You should. Well. I wrote this down. I'm almost done, Greg. Y'all come. I wrote this down. When we start believing what God says about us, we'll start doing what He says what He needs us to do. You think about that. When we start believing what God says about us, that I am the head and I am not the tail. God said, I'll bless you going in and I'll bless you coming out. God said, no weapon formed against Brian Keith Rafferty shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against him shall cease at the name of Jesus Christ. God says, I pray that your body is in health such as your soul is in health. For God so loved the world, not just white people, not just black people, not just Asian people or Hispanic people. God loves all people. You say, well, Brian, you're just crazy. No, I just believe the Bible. And people get jealous and they get mad. Because somebody's prospering in God's name. And that's how God designed us. You, God designed us that way. When God created humanity, there was nobody sick. Now, I know this ruffles feathers. It's all right. Just read your Bible. Let God minister to you. Open your mind. Identify it. If anything bad comes at you, start rejecting it. And then replace it. Just replace it. When you walk into church, it can be so easy to be so critical. So easy to be so critical. But if you walked in today and old Satan says, Well, the lights are off again. What if you said, With lights or without lights, I'm going to praise the Lord today. Amen. Well, this is this and that is that. Yep. But I'm going to praise Him anyhow. Amen. See, I'm not going to let you or a circumstance dictate my worship. Amen. I'm not going to let nobody stop the big J-E-S U-S in my body, right. in my life. Yeah. I'm not going to listen to negative, critical things. You say, Brian, how do you do it? It's hard, but I do it. I'll be going down the road. Just, just leave church today. Somebody will pull out in front of you on Highway 70. They sure will. But here's what I started doing, Eddie. When they pull out in front of me, boy, that old flesh will rise up. Get them. Get, just bump them a little bit. Just bump them a little bit. And all of a sudden, I'll say, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, praise His name. Hallelujah. And I may have to turn the radio up just a little bit louder and raise my hand a little bit higher, but I'm going to praise the Lord 
And don't you run out in front of me. Don't test me. <laughs> but it's truth. So listen to me. How do we deal with this? Identify it. Everybody say, I've identified my, 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 my stuff. I've identified it. Now you've got to reject it. You've got to grab a hold of it. You've got to arrest it. You've got to slaughter it. You've got to kill it. Just get it. Oh, you're saying, no, oh, this is a good word God just gave us in the court. This is good. When, listen, y'all got me? Say, I got you, preacher. When you get rid of something, you've got to put something back in. When you, when you kill that stuff and you get rid of it, you've got to replace it. You've got to put something back in. What do I do? Anything that is positive, anything that is giving God praise, honor, and glory, praiseworthy, excellent spirit, I think about these things. You say, Brian, does that really work? Guys, I promise you, if God didn't work, I resign today. Is that good enough? Can I be any more plainer? Todd, if God does not work, we're all going to hell. So I think you believe the way I believe. That He was born. That He died. But He got back up on the third day. And I've got the dunamis ex eazo. I've got the power of the Holy Ghost in me. I've got the power to grab that thought, Dixie, to slaughter it and to start replacing it with good things in my life. Amen. Hold everybody accountable. Well, did you know what Susie did? Uh-uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you and bind you by the authority of God. And if this is a bill collector, I bind you too. <laughs> So guys, you identify it, you reject it, you arrest it, you slaughter it, you kill it, you replace it. You replace it with good, excellent, praiseworthy, good things in your mind. I believe somebody's going to get set free today. I really believe that because God's Word's that powerful. Never comes back void. Never comes back void. If you're a negative person, guess what? That's what you're going to be. If you're critical and talk about people all the time, that's what you're going to be. Watch this. You'll be, you will die a lonely person. Yes, you will. <laughs> you, will die. you will die. You will have five people at your funeral. You will die a lonely person. I've just learned when me and Dana can't get along, she's wrong. <laughs> but here's what I've learned. I honor her. And it took me a long time, 20 years. Look at that. Still not good. But Dana does something now that just really gets to my soul. When we start fighting and disagreeing, and we do, y'all do too. Don't sit there and look, well, not today. Oh, you wait till today. Because you get under the anointing of God when you walk out, somebody's going to run out in front of you on Highway 70. Your order's going to be late at Fiesta, and they're going to charge you more. Hope not. But Dana says, now let's pray. Pray, 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 pray. Bobby, the fruit didn't fall too far. Pray, pray, pray. If you're sick in your body, pray. If your family's distraught right now, pray. If the devil's after you and you're having a hard time paying your bills, you need to rebuke and bind the enemy and stand up and say, God, you didn't make me poor. You made me rich. And I receive you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I will get by, not just barely, but I will get by. I'm so tired of the devil winning. I'm so sick of the devil. Oh, I feel that in my spirit. Some of you have believed the lie. You believe the lie. You believe the lie. I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I can't do it. I can't do it. You better rise up today and say, yes, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You say, Brian, what do you do when bad things come your way? Watch this. I got a God says, I blessed you with the goodness of my spirit. Yeah. How y'all thinking right now? Boy, when God gets in the atmosphere, things change, don't it? So you got to identify it. You got to reject it. You got to stop it. You got to kill it. You got to slaughter it. And then you got to replace it. So in Jesus' name, Father God, I've done what you called me to do. So Lord, now I pray that there'll be a lot of renewing. A lot of Christians stand up today, God, and get back right with you. 
Lord, I pray we identify that old toxic, poisonous thought in our soul. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus today, it's slaughtered, it's killed, rejected. Take it off the slaughter and replace it, God, with good word in Jesus' name. And all God's people say Y'all were beautiful today. Y'all were so beautiful today. Y'all done a great, great job. It's not over. How many of y'all feel it? <laughs> I'm telling you. I told someone the other day, they said, we've been listening by radio. Here's what they said. They said, I was in my kitchen and I felt the Lord. Here's what I told them. I said, if you think you feel Him in the kitchen, you've got to show up one Sunday at Elkhorn. That's right. Not because of the praise, not because of me. It's all about the Lord. I am who I am because of Him. You are who you are because of Him. you got a good marriage because of Him. And we're all going to heaven because of Him. So I can't think of a better man to praise today but the King Jesus. So if you would, stand to your feet.